Hello, dear students. Uh, it's nice to meet you again for our next topic. Uh, as we all know that uh, we started uh, with the microorganism and uh, we classify microorganism, a bacteria based on various characteristics. And uh, we know that it is mostly based on to various criteria such as uh, the nature of the cell wall, whether it has a thick cell wall or a thin cell wall. And this uh, composition of the cell wall, it gives the staining characteristics of the organisms. And then we can also use various other categories like the ability of the microorganism to grow in the presence of oxygen or in the absence of the oxygen, or whether they may expose or they do not expose. So we have four or five different criteria that we combine together to classify the microorganism. Now, based on these uh, criteria, we all know that the medically important bacteria can have a thick cell wall, and this thick cell wall give a rigid configuration to the bacterial cell, and it may have a thin cell wall. And we know that the thin cell wall cannot give that much rigidity to the cell, so they are flexible. And we also have some of the microorganisms which do not have this cell wall, what we call as the ballless microorganism or cell wall deficit microorganism. And one of the classical examples in that is the mycoplasma. Now, within the thick, rigid cell wall microorganism, uh, we have the gram positive and we have the gram negative. And we have the gram positive cocci and we have the gram negative cocci. Uh, we have gone through the gram positive cocci like staphylococci, staphylococci, and gram negative cocci, the only genus of which is the Nazeria. And the two important species in the Nazeria were the Nazeria mesitridis and Nazeria gnori. Now, if we move on to them, we have a uh, gram positive rod that is spore forming and non spore forming. And uh, now we will move on to the gram negative rods. Now, in order to have some basic concept for the gram negative rods, we really classify the gram negative rods into facultative and what we call as the aerobic or anaerobes. Now within the gram negative rods, uh, we have some organisms which are present in the adult state, uh, like Salmonella, Shigella, Scratia, Proteus, and we have some organisms which are present in the, which are zootic in nature. Uh, zootic are the organism, are the, are the organism that causes diseases transmissible from animals to humans. So those organisms are those diseases which are transmissible from the animals, maybe wild animals, maybe domestic animals like cattle, sheep, goat, dogs, or wild animals like, like rabbits. So they are all known as the zootics. And there are some organisms which uh, affect the respiratory tracts. Now the Four more important genera in the species that are found in the respiratory tract and are associated with the respiratory tract infections. Typically, they are the Haemophilus, the Bordetella, the Legionella, and the Cytobacter. Now, Haemophilus is a genus, and the important, significant clinically organism is the Haemophilus influenzae. We have another two species of Haemophilus influenza. One, one is the Haemophilus uh, parainfluenzae, Haemophilus aegypticus, and Haemophilus disisri. We'll deal all of these. In the Bordetella, we have one important organism which is known as the Bordetella tussis that causes tussis, whooping cup. This is what we call it. In the, we have the Legionella, we have one important organism known as the Legionella nemophila. And in the Cytobacter, another organism, uh, that we will have just look at that. It is Acetobacter bevinae. Now we have four important genus, four important organisms, and we will now look into these gram negative rods, which are typically associated with the respiratory tract. If you look at the Haemophilus influenzae, this organism is responsible for diseases like meningitis, uh, otitis media, the sinusitis, it can cause pneumonia and epiglottitis. Now the lab diagnosis of the hemophilus in frenzy, broadly speaking, based on to the culture, the isolation of the microorganism 
from the from the specimen. And this algorithm we can also identify based on the uh, capsular polysaccharides that is present in the in the serum or the CF, CSF. Now this algorithm, the hemophilus intrinsic, it needs specific growth factors. We cannot culture this microorganism onto ordinary blood agar. We need to add some of the growth factors, what we call as the X and V factors, the heme factors and the non factors. Heme and non factors, they are to be added into the blood agar in order to grow the hemophilus intrinsic. The body tuses, uh, that causes uh, the whooping cup for tuses. We identify this microorganism, maybe we can culture it, or we can use the fluorescent antibody techniques to identify the microorganism. Now, this organism, it does not require any addition of the additional factors like uh, HNP factors. The Legionella hemophila that causes pneumonia, it can be diagnosed based on the serology. Uh, we can also culture the, the organism and we can also identify the antigen. And this organism also does not require an addition of the heme factors. And the fourth one, uh, what is the Cytobacter pemini? It causes ventilator associated pneumonia, one of the major causes in the hospitalized individuals. We can cultivate the microorganism and again, it can be grown ordinary onto a specific area. So these are the four organisms that we'll need in. First, we'll start with the uh, Haemophilus influenzae, Bartle tussis. Now these organisms, they are found in humans. Both these organisms are exclusively, exclusively found in humans. They will not find these influenzae or tussis organisms in the animals. They don't have any animal reservoir. They don't have any animal, animal host. So the Legionella pneumophila, it is found in the environmental water source. And the Cetobacter, it is a wild source. It colonizes also the skin and it is also present in the respiratory tract as commences. So the Cetobacter, it is present in the water source and it is also the normal flora of the skin as colonizer and the respiratory tract as commences. And Legionella pneumophila is also a water source. So the Hemophilus influenzae and tussis, they are exclusively the human organism and their source are the human, their reservoirs are the humans. Whereas the Legionella and the Cetobacter, they have the water source uh, in addition to the source of colonization of the skin and the epidastrated presence in case of Cetobacter pemini. If you look at the diseases caused by the Hemophilus influenzae, uh, it is used uh, to be the one of the leading cause of uh, meningitis in children. And this meningitis incidence has not been decreased to greater extent because of the use of the vaccines that has been made against this microorganism. The infection uh, with this organism, it ranges from very mild ear infections to severe diseases like it can cause broad stem infections and meningitis, it can establish bacteremia and meningitis. The organism is invasive and this invasiveness of the microorganism uh, can normally free germs in the area. I mean, if the area is even not used to free of microorganism, this organism can invade into that area and then penetrate into the spinal fluid leading to meningitis or blood steam leading to bacteremia. Now, this, as I said, you is the main cause of meningitis in children. Uh, and it's greatly reduced by the use of highly effective conjugated vaccines. A highly effective conjugated vaccine has been developed and that vaccine really provides protection to the meningitis caused by uh, hemophilus influenzae. Now this is, uh, you see, a very, very important microorganism because the upper respiratory tract infection can also cause by this organism like otitis media, sinusitis, conjunctivitis, epiglitis, or sepsis in children. Uh, pneumonia in adults can also be associated with hemophilus influenzae, and particularly with those who are chronic obstructive lung disease uh, patient. Uh, the organism, uh, hemophilus deducidae, which is causes, which is a sexually transmissible disease, and we call it a chancre, we call soft chancre. The taponema peridum, 
it causes syphilis and syphilis also makes chancre. That chancre is a hard chancre. The chancre, it is a layer, I let you know, it's a layer. This is ulcerative layers found in the penile area. This is caused by the soft ulcer, what we call chancre in sexually transmissible disease caused by the suri is in case of hemophilus uh, suri, where the heart chancre it caused by taponema pallidum, which causes syphilis. So you will find uh, the chancroid and chancre layers in case of hemophilus uh, uh, influenzae, sorry, duceri and the uh, and taponema pallidum respectively. Now the organism itself is a graminative rod, it's cocobacillarian shape, and it is an encapsulated, the capsule is a polysaccharide in nature. Now if you remember the very first uh, sentence that I told you while we were doing the classification, that uh, some bacteria have pretty nice capsules, and it was the, the Staphylococcus aureus, Bacillus anthracis, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, Hemophilus influenza, Staphylococcus pneumoniae. And there's one more microorganism that is your senior pastors. So you can add now, yes, yes, some bacteria have platinized capsules. So these are one of the major group of the microorganisms that have the capsule. There are many more. So the Hemophilus influenza capsule is a very prominent capsule, and it was one of the major virulent factors in case of uh, influenza infection. Based on to the polysaccharide, uh, the variation in the capsule of Hemophilus influenzae, we have six different uh, types, six different types of Hemophilus influenzae has been identified based on to the polysaccharide capsular variation. And these six identifiable types are starting from A to F. That's Hemophilus influenza type A, Hemophilus influenza type B and so on. But the most familiar and the most important among the capsular antigen is the B antigens. So the most important one is the hemophilus influenza type B, or what we write as HIB. Now the hemophilus influenza type B, the, the, the capsule of type B is of polyribitol phosphate. And this is very, very virulent component of the spike organism. And this is also very, very immunogenic also. That's why the fraction of the, the capsular component has been used. Specifically, the B capsular component has been used to make vaccine because this component is highly virulent and is highly immunogenic also. Uh, the non-capsulated stains, they are not invasive. They cannot go deep into the meninges or into the spinal cord. They can cause infection in the superficial mucosal disease, like the upper respiratory tract infection, sinusitis, and arthritis media. So this means that capsule is the main factor that contribute virulence to the encapsulated stains and variant of encapsulated stains or mutants which do not have the capsule. They lose their power of invasiveness and they just cause the superficial mild infection because of the respiratory tract. A specialized medium is required for the growth of this microorganism. As we discussed in the very earlier, that we need a specific heme factor, what we call it the X factor, or we need, we need specific NAD factors for the growth of this microorganism. These two components, what we call as the heme factor and the NAD factors, they are used for the energy production. They are used for the energy production. So, uh, a very specific addition of the growth factors are needed in order to facilitate the growth of this microorganism in the laboratory medium. Now, some individuals, uh, there are some risk factors that contribute towards the of this microorganism. Uh, occurs this, uh, the disease occurs mostly in the, in the babies of uh, six months to one years of age. And even the children more than less than five years of age can have this problem. Adults of more than 65 are equal to 65 years of age. So a wide variety of individuals are at risk, particularly the children and the adults. And high risk group includes the individuals having sickle cell diseases and those who have been, you see, has been operated for the spleen and the spleenectomized individual, 
They do not have the spines. As they have infected individuals are again at risk. And antibodies and complementary deficiency syndrome, this is a rare condition uh, that affects the body's ability to fight against infection. Cancer requiring uh, chemotherapies or individuals who are on radiotherapy or bone marrow transplant or uh, cell transplant or who are receiving the corticosteroid for long term of treatment, they all are exposed to this infection. All these diseases and different treatments, they, they act as a, as a risk factor. All those individuals are at risk factors. So the pathogenesis and the epidemiology of hemophilus is uh, not that difficult with the exception of one enzyme uh, that it has been. Uh, as we said that it is exclusively a disease of humans, there is absolutely no animal world reservoir, so transmission from animals to humans is not possible. It's not a zoonotic organism. It does not cause a zoonosis. It is not a zoonotic organism. It's exclusively human pathogen. Excuse me. <coughs> the organism live in the nose, <coughs> sorry, and throat, and it does not cause normally any harm into this uh, place. It enters by inhalation of the respiratory droplets, uh, which are generated by the sneezing and coughing. And after entrance into the human respiratory tract, uh, uh, it becomes colonized and uh, it may lead to sinusitis or sometimes to pneumonia. <coughs> Sorry. The IgA protease that is possessed, it decreases the secretory IgA. So this degradation or destruction or dysfunction of the IgA by the action of the IgA protease present in this organism, it facilitates the attachment of this microorganism to the respiratory mucosa. Now after adherence and attachment with the respiratory mucosa, the organism then enters into the bloodstream and spread to the other organs and particularly it settles in the meninges causing meningitis. The pathogenicity of this microorganism is mainly contributed towards the antiphagocytic capsule and endotoxin. The mode of endotoxin that is produced has not yet been identified, but mostly it's the antiphagocytic action of this microorganism that contributes towards the virulence. The most infections, as we discussed earlier, is the six months to six years of age, and the peak uh, incidence has also been reported from six months to one years of age because this is the time when the babies don't have their, you see, develop their own immune system. They are dependent on the maternal antibodies. And the maternal antibodies, they last maximum for one year's time. So the immune system is not fully functional. The maternal antibodies has been decreased. So this organism has the opportunity to cause disease in children and infants. <coughs> Sorry. Now, the meningitis, which is caused by the invasive stains of hemophilus infringi, they cannot be differentiated based on the clinical pictures from the meningitis caused by other organisms, like meningococcus, the gonococci and zia gonori that cause meningitis, meningitis, streptococcus meningi, streptococcus pyogenes. They cannot be distinguished. So we'll have to, typically you see, there's rapid onset of fever, there is headache, stiff neck, and drowsiness, which are the generalized signs and symptoms caused by the hemophilus infusing. Painful sinusitis, otitis media, and the infected sinuses and redness uh, with building of the tympanic membrane. Uh, that, that, that's, the, that's the general picture of this microorganism. <clears throat> Sorry. Serious infections, uh, it may lead to septic arthritis, cellulitis, sepsis, in septinectomized individual. Now, throat is swollen and its appearance look like cherry red, cherry red color appearance of the throat, particularly of the epiglottis area. It exclusively is because of the hypophilus influenza. We can distinguish with the epiglottitis uh, or the pharyngitis uh, caused by the streptococcus uh, pyogenes with that of the hemophilus influenzae because of the cherry red color appearance of the lesions in the glottis. 
Now, the lab diagnosis of this microorganism will have to go for the isolation of the bacteria. And this isolation can be made onto the heated blood agar. And you all know that the, when we heat the blood agar, it changes its color into chocolate, and we call it a chocolate agar. And chocolate agar is the medium for the growth of the disease. This is a glorian intermediate also. And when we heat the blood agar, it inactivates all the non specific inhibitors that are present and will not allow the growth of the immunoprecipitation to grow. So, heating of uh, blood changes its color, call it a chocolate color, give it a chocolate color, we call it a chocolate agar. And it also inactivates the non-specific inhibitors, which inhibit the growth of the uh, other other organism, but allow the growth of the influenza. And this uh, medium is enriched with the X, I, X, and Y factors, the growth factors. So chocolate agar with growth factors is the medium for the growth of this microorganism. Uh, other species of the influenza that we will discuss right now, uh, the influenza. Uh, in uh, the hemophilus parainfluenzae, hemophilus uh, the duceri, uh, they cannot, uh, they do not require any of the H and Y factors, right? So they can grow onto the, onto the ordinary blood agar or chocolate agar. Definite identification of this microorganism based on to the reaction of uh, capsule, what we call as the capsular swelling, the capsule swells in the, in the water part with the antigen. This reaction is known as killing reaction. We have also done this reaction previously in one of another organism, and you must remember that. Now, the organism can also be identified based on to the fluorescent antibody staining in the tissues. Our PCR has been established for this uh, organism. Normally, you see the growth of an organism suspected of hemophilus influenzae in the chocolate agar containing H and Y factors is almost uh, diagnostic. If an organism, it grows in a chocolate agar that has been supplemented with the X and V factors, we presumably uh, can start treatment of influenza physique. Uh, the polyscryed capsule is a valent capsule and uh, if you look over, look over here, you can really see the well-established capsule, well-developed capsule. And uh, it gives positive reactions to the Quilling uh, test. Quilling test, as we have seen, that uh, you can see that the swelling of the capsule it binds by the homologous antibodies. Uh, so we take a loo full of the colonies. <coughs> we mix, mix it with the equal quantity of the specific antisera, and we have the positive test. So the growth of the microorganism in chocolate agar containing X and Y factors and the killing reactions, they give the definite uh, identification of this microorganism. Now the treatment must be started immediately because we cannot wait for a long time. It organism take at least five to nine days time to grow and we cannot wait till that, that time. And ceftriaxin is the drug of choice. About 20 to 30 percent of the hemophilus uh, Influenza type B microorganism, they produce beta lactamase. So we cannot use uh, drugs that has beta lactam rings like penicillin and its derivative. The fatality rate is very, very high. Even it's more than 90% in untreated uh, meningitis cases with HIV. Because, because of this high fatality rate in, in infants and in children and in old age groups. Uh, we have to go for the prevention. And uh, we have uh, hemophilus influenza type B conjugated vaccines to the diphtheria toxin. This vaccine is uh, freely available in the market. The vaccine has been conjugated with the, uh, with the toxide, uh, diphtheria toxide, and it provides the uh, protection when it is very much effective and does not cause any serious side effects compared to that of the previously available diphtheria, tetanus toxide, and the mephrizonza vaccine. Uh, the rifampicin can be used as a preventive measure uh, for the individual who are in close contact. 
Now the other organism uh, that we have uh, is now is the Hemophilus dicili. Uh, it again is a gram atomic organism and it causes Shankri, which is a sexually transmissible disease. And it has to be differentiated from the other shanker like ligands caused by Treponema pallidum. Uh, it provides, you see, the soft ulcers, non indurated soft ulcerated lians. The painful penile lians are the prominent sign of this organism. This local lymphadenitis, what we call it as the bubo. This, this bubo, they are also getting get for your senior pestis. Now, the diagnosis by isolation of the uh, Organism from the ulcers or from the pus aspirate from the lymph nodes. It requires X factors, but it does not require the B factors. But it can still grow onto the chocolate agar. Erythromycin, azithromycin, and ceftriaxone, they are the drug of diocese. We can use any one of these. But the penicillin should be used with caution because the plasma encoded penicillin resistant has been attributed towards this microorganism. Uh, the other one species that is uh, Haemophilus uh, aegypticus, this is not a true species. Actually, it is a derivative or a biotype of the Haemophilus influenza. Haemophilus influenza is the main species and based on the biochemical differences, uh, fermentation of different uh, biochemical regions, this stain of Haemophilus influenza, it behaves differently. So the scientists, the microbiologists, they have decided to give it a separate name. You can say it's Haemophilus influenzae biotype Egypticus, or you can say it is Haemophilus influenzae biotype Egypticus, Haemophilus influenzae Egypticus, or there is another name for this, what you call the Coxfield's bacillus. It's a gram mark organism. It causes conjunctivitis in children, and it can also cause a peculiar disease in Brazilian beaches, and this is a uh, particularly in the children, and this is very much a uh, fatal disease. So these are the three microorganisms with reference to the uh, respiratory tech gamma rods. We finish this over here, and we will take the last one in the next class. Thank you very much. Yeah. Well, 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 well.